Yeah, let's. I mean, we can do it now in two minutes and then just be done with it. Yeah? That's right. All right, let's do another photo up after this. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the ambassador of Canada in Germany. Uh, good evening, bonsoir à tous. Uh, herzlich willkommen zur Kanadischen Botschaft. Für uns ist es heute eine besondere Freude, uh, Sie zu verhaben, weil wir auch besondere uh, Gäste haben. We're very pleased uh, this evening to welcome our Kate Fire to screen the movie for you. Uh, and really, without uh, further ado, you know who they are. They're fresh from major victories at the Grammys and at the, at the Brit Awards. Uh, we welcome them warmly here. Au plaisir de vous voir ici. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've got um, two lovely ladies with microphones on either side. Um, I'd like you, if you would be so kind, uh, when you ask a question, to get up, state, state your name and your media. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, ask the first question. We've just all seen the, this, just been two intense 30 minutes. Um, I will just go ask because I know you guys are touring a hell of a lot, and you're, when you're not touring, you're making something, and you made a record, and you've spent a long time making this record. When exactly did you have time to make this movie, and what prompted the uh, co collaboration with uh, Spike Jones? We didn't really have time to make the movie. <laughs> we we ended up doing it towards the end of our record, and we went down to Austin. Uh, during the final stages of the suburbs, and Winter Machine were actually finishing up the vocals on the album. Um, so it was, it was kind of 110%. We were super saturated at the moment, but it was, it was fun. It might have been my most intense week of my life bef until this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because it was my 30th birthday. We were in Austin, and recording regime was recording the vocals for Sprawl 2, and I was recording vocals in Austin, and we were writing, Will and I were writing with Spike during the day, and then, and then the filming, so didn't even have time to do a 30th birthday party, but it was kind of the best birthday of all time, because we were just so deep into making the film and finishing the record, and, and uh, so yeah, it was, it was pretty exciting. The whole thing was about maybe 10 days or, or something, half of which was writing, and then maybe four days of shooting. But yeah, no good time. <laughs> and and how this whole Spike Jones hookup? How did that happen? He um Spike uh, was listening to our first record, Funeral, a lot while he was writing Where the Wild Things Are, um, which I think took him an infinite amount of time to do. I mean, he was working on it for seventy-five years or seven years, <laughs> <laughs> either seventy-five or seven years. I can't remember. Um, so we met him you know, several times, you know, back then when we were in the van uh, touring, and uh, so he was one of the few kind of artist friends who was around while we were making the suburbs, um, and so he heard a lot of the songs in kind of rough stages and started having ideas for visuals, and uh, we've never really properly. Oh, his first birthday, right? Oh yeah, it was his fortieth birthday. <laughs> Yeah. And we, and we were recording. Yeah. The suburbs. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yes, we're ten years younger than him, <laughs> and he still skates skateboards. Uh, over to you, please. The microphones. Now you gotta get running here. Uh, Nathalie Petrovsky, La Presse, Montréal. Hello, bonjour. Uh, I just want to get back to the Grammys just one minute. Um, when you won the album of the year, you before thanking your fans, before thanking the Grammys, you thanked Montreal and Quebec en français, and uh, which touched a lot Quebecers, and they were very proud. And I wanted to know what message you were 
trying to pass to Americans by this thank you. That's my first question. And my second question is, what do you think of the fact that uh, since that happened, um, Pauline Marois, who is the leader of the Parti Québécois, has asked that you be honored at the uh, National Assembly. So, two questions from Montreal. Um, I thank Montreal. Well, should I speak? I don't know which language to speak here. Uh, okay. Um, and then I'll be slide for that. But um, either way, um, I'll say in both. I thank Montreal from the heart because it's my hometown, and because I mean it, and that's it. Et, et je, je peux dire en français aussi, on a remercié Montréal et le Québec parce que Montréal, c'est notre ville et on l'aime et ça vient du fond du cœur et, et c'est tout. C'est ça. Non, je veux dire, quand nous avons commencé la bande, we never really had any expectations of anything, you know, like a Grammy Award or anything like that. And it was, you know, I think we were very lucky to, you know, it kind of all happen, happened in, in Montreal. And uh, and so, yeah, it was just kind of like from the beginnings of the band to mm -hmm. that moment was, was kind of a, was, you know, very, you know, beautiful little moment. Um, that's news to us. Uh, yeah. Uh, Shall we go back to the movie? Yeah. Um, questions about the movie, please? Here? I have two short questions. Uh, which kind of cinema do you like? And what do you think about uh, the phenomenon of uh, Lady Gaga? Do you think she stole the uh, song for Madonna? What? <laughs> well, the first question, I don't think... The, Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> air conditioned? <laughs> yeah, big cushy chairs. <laughs> no, um, I, I, my brother and I definitely kind of grew up on a lot of science fiction films and uh, Terry Gilliam, who we worked with earlier this year, is a big, a big hero and uh, I think part of the appeal of making this film was to to really um, try and work kind of within the B B movie genre, but to, to just kind of do the the bits that were interesting to us, rather than trying to you know tell the whole story, kind of tell episodes of of a larger of a larger film. Um, yeah, I think Terry Gilliam is a very relevant reference for this particular film. Um, yeah. When we were little kids, you know, we'd watch a lot of, you know, kind of cheesy 80s movies that we were too young to be able to be watching, and you'd always end up just watching the first half before your parents would come in and bust you. And so it's kind of a little bit inspired by just watching the first half of films and not having to figure out how to resolve them. <laughs> I didn't actually catch the second question. Phenomena of Lady Gaga, and you feel she stole the song from Madonna. I have no attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, questions? Um, why are the suburbs in this film a kind of war zone? Um. Well, I think in this film, the, the kind of, it's very much about the relationships of, of the kids. And uh, I think a lot of times in science fiction, there, it's, it's almost secondary to the, to, the, to the story, which is really kind of about relationships. And it's, you know, to me, it's, it's, it enables you, um, the kind of, the background world of the film kind of enables you to give a context to those relationships and, and that the intensity of feeling um, that I think a lot of people who are that age have and, and uh, I know